Heidi, you are part of a healthy wave of people who have come to St. James in the last decade from other faith traditions. Tell us a little about your early formation. I was raised between the Nazarene Church and Church of the Brethren, and then went to college and met the Mennonites, then served overseas with the Mennonite organizations. And and then when I came home for my service, um, I went back to my Nazarene Church, where I'd been pretty actively involved before leaving. And I was there for a few years. There was a shift in my beliefs, and so I left that church looking for something that more aligned with my theology and my understanding of who God is. At this time, you'd also moved to Lancaster City and started looking for a church here that was closer to home and work. Talk about what you were looking for and why you chose us. I was looking for something less based on your emotions and more just kind of grounded and a little more liturgical or quiet. I liked the liturgy, um, more traditional service. I liked that we had involvement in the community. I also found that I agreed with some of the theology. Just having a little more freedom. I, I remember being invited for a glass of wine or a beer after church, and I was like, what? You, you drink in this church? Like, that's okay. <laughs> so yeah, it was, for me, uh, freeing in that way, and felt more like, this is how I see God. Like, God's a little more open, and He's not so black and white. So I just felt, how can you say that God is love and yet still judge so many people and cut them out of your church or your faith? So that was one of my struggles. And St. James was very open to that and not cutting people out. There was another church in town that had a lot of these similar aspects, but they weren't as welcoming. I went a number of times to Sunday services and nobody would talk to me or introduce themselves. But at St. James, I remember John Walker and Andy Woolworth and some other people that just kind of introduced themselves. They actually put themselves out there and invited me to do something and connect me and and talk to me and and get me connected to the next person, you know, and that was, that welcoming was key. That was like the tipping point for me to to commit to St. James. How does worship and your practice of faith feel different here? I love the more intellectual approach to scripture at St. James. I like this process. So I did move away from some of that emotional worship where, you know, every Sunday you get teary-eyed or fall on your knees and raise your hands and clap. I really appreciate forum and I really like that time to dig into things a little more. We've had some really great forum discussions and I may not always agree with everything, but it's a good time to look at something new that maybe I haven't thought of or get a different perspective on things. You have been a caseworker in the Department of Human Services for 12 years. You also have a real estate license. You've purchased and rehabbed a beautiful home in the city where you host Airbnb guests. What from your faith keeps you grounded and do you draw upon in daily life? I think the one thing I thought of is just loving people. And in my job, it's become very easy to become cynical and jaded and just not love the people I serve because there are a lot of people who lie and there are a lot of people who, you know, whatever they can do to try to get more benefits and things like that. You find yourself starting to look at everyone like that, like you're lying to me. What story are you telling? So probably for the past year, I've been really trying to be aware of that more in my work and also in life, respecting people, loosening up a bit. I don't have to be the police for my job. Caseworkers tend to feel like they are detectives and police officers and trying to find the liars, and I'm trying to just relax on that. I think just in my job and in life, accept people for who they are and where they are. I mean, whether it be a client or a friend, a coworker, or I don't know what they're going through, really. Talk a little bit about giving to the church and how your understanding of it has evolved. I became a Christian around the age of 16. Like that's when I made that decision for myself and started to learn about what is a Christian and part of being a Christian is giving, tithing. So that's when I started forming that concept and being challenged by the church I was attending. And I think the expectation is that you give 10% of your income for tithe. 
doing that and over the years, I mean, when you're young, you have low paying jobs, it's tough. This hurts, you know, this 10%. So it can be challenging as far as, I guess, giving in any way can be challenging. I am sure there are young families that can't give their time right now. And that's good. They should be putting their time into their families. In my mind, that's serving God. You've served God and St. James in so many ways through the years. What's something you've done that you might not have expected you'd do? I serve on vestry, and that I would never have imagined. Being in a position of leadership like that, I have always been in some leadership in my churches, but usually that's like teaching Sunday school or leading a small group. Uh, the invitation to even run for vestry was like very humbling. I'm learning a ton. You know, maybe in 25 years I'll be on vestry again and I'll be like, look, I know what I'm doing this time. <laughs> How does having a church family make a difference in your life? I want to know that just like with my biological family, they're there. So when and if something comes up, I know that this family is here. I'm going to bank on that. <laughs> maybe I haven't had to cash in on it yet, but <laughs> it will be here. And it's a two-way street. You can't just take you have to give as well. Sometimes it is as simple as just those interactions with people at forum or at church and you know you just make that connection and sometimes it's all I need is like okay yeah, I'm not alone in the world today this week I have a family here. I can picture interactions I've had with people you can sense kind of that mutual feeding and hopefully I've met a need for that person today and I know that people have met needs for me 